second lot of these wonderful missing area paradoxes or geometrical vanishes to show this is one of my favorite items because it's so very puzzling and some of the originality that's gone into it is amazing this one for instance by steve wagner is one of my all favorites i think it shows alice in wonderland with an imaginary situation of not having one cheshire cat staring at the branches but one two three four five of them and of course when you move the pieces around which is what you always do with this you see what happens. Well, as the word here says, one of the Cheshire cats, as expected, turns into a smile. Nothing left of it but the smile. And I'll try and get it a little more lined about there. And if you look at it at the beginning, you'll see that the um, smile has been made up from the chin of this one and the funny black ears from that one. So a very clever bit of um, artwork from Steve Wagner. And that's, I think, a, a, a very fine example of, a, of that vanishing area. And there's another one here, which is, again, taking things to a completely different f uh, flame, um, frame. This is Donald Knuth, who's an academic in America, who came up with the idea of uh, having a vanishing, well, a, 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 um, a, a paradox, but entirely in words. Let me just get this up to the camera so you can see it. So this is just a poem he's written, and it's got, what, six lines to it. And when you move the pieces around, you've got to do some cutting here and, and arrange it. You end up with a, still a poem. It's almost the same poem, in fact, but it's only got five lines. Well, it's very obvious to see that he's just juggled the pieces around. In fact, this version of the, of the paradox is much easier to understand than faces with, with subtleties here, because it's, it's, it's clearly words that are reshuffled. You've got five longish lines and six shorter lines, and that's the end of it. So, but the first problem, as far as I know, to actually attempt to do a geometrical vanish with, with pure poetry. So nice one, that. The next one to show you is a very famous one, but it's something that um, only appeared, well, a long time ago, when this was, was first discovered in history, way back to about 1600, they were playing not with individuals, but with, but with shapes. This is a very, very famous picture, because when you look at all the outside measurements there, they exactly match up, and you can't think how on earth this space has appeared when you moved it. It's extraordinary. Well, the solution, if I can show it, I'll have a go at demonstrating the piece. Oh, I'll spot that now in a moment. I've got to put it on a hard surface. And what you've got to do is look at the hypotenuse line. And in this version, which is a complete, there's no gap in it, this is actually not a straight line, this hypotenuse, it's slightly bowed in. So there's a bit of a bit of area has been lost there. And the other one, where there is an area missing there, well, it's gone into a slightly bowed outwards. I'm exaggerating, but that is not a straight line hypotenuse. It bows outwards. So the missing area is in this area here. It's been transferred from here to here, but in a very subtle way, which no one would ever detect, except by looking at it extremely carefully and getting some ooh, almost instruments to look at it. So that's a, a, fa a famous one, and it's, it's, it's been highly recommended by people who want to, you know, look at the subject. The last one to show you is one that a friend of mine, Mark, makes wonderful cards every year. He produces me a, 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 a Christmas card, and this particular one was especially nice to me because it was a missing area paradox. So I'll just set it up on the table here. And I'll lift it up. Actually, I'll do it on without this, so it won't be so fussy. So one way, it's on the red pieces, which is here, 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 and here. There's the last red piece. Here we, are. And we set it up so it exactly matches the picture in the background. So there we are. There's to add up, and this one here, it's got to, it's going to add up there. That's right. Uh, that's going to go down a bit, and that's going to add up there. And then the last two pieces. This is the bottom of the picture with his legs. That's that bit's going to go in there, the edge of the frame. He's got another nice frame. These cards of his he produces over the many years he's done it now are just superb. So that's got a big gap in it, isn't it? And you're looking a bit horrified. Oops, Daisy. And then we turn the whole pieces round, and it comes to the green side. Oh. 
sanity and order is restored because we have um, apparently let's do this. that's got to go back to about there and then we go this one here and this one here and look restoration oh my goodness we've got to get those legs he's got to have a he mustn't have he, he mustn't have a twisted ankle mark he's got to have an untwisted ankle here's the ankle son let's put it up. So that's astonishing, isn't it, to be able to achieve that just for the, a card. And of course, it's never been published. It's something he just gave out to his hundred or so recipients of his of his business card. So well done, Mark. He's um, come up with a winner there. <laughs>